Hey, Nathan, guess where we're at? Nashville. That's right, we're here for the launch of the brand new Rogue. But yesterday we went to the Lane Motor Museum where I found my dream car. But... Buddy screwed up. Yeah, check it out. He also owns an automotive supply business. All right, aren't you standing over there? Okay. How's that? No, 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 just Nathan. How's that look? That look okay? Yeah, I'm fine. One, 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 one. Okay, good. Ready? As you guys can see, I screwed up. I hit the butt. Well, never mind. <laughs> anyway, we were there a very short time, but I did get to interview the director of the museum. Coming up next. On the fast lane car. Jeff, is this your museum? Well, it's a 51C3, so I'm the director of the museum. Yeah. I don't actually own the museum. And we are in one of the most eclectic car collections I have seen in a long time. So you've got a Tatra 603 there, which is a special car for me because I'm Czech. So tell me, how many Tatras do you have? We have 23 Tatras in the collection. It must be the largest collection of Tatras in the entire world, maybe? In the entire world, except for Kopernica, where there's a Tatra museum that obviously has more Tatras than we do. So tell me, how did you get started collecting these kind of crazy cars? Well, I was into Izettas and MGs when I was younger, and then um, I actually got interested in Tatra when I went to Retromobile, okay. the big French sure. car show in yeah. February every year, and Tatra had an exhibit. They had Stalin's convertible T600, they had a T87, and they had the Aeroluge, which we have a replica of back over here, okay. the, the propeller-powered sled. And so that's where I really learned about Tatra and became kind of fascinated with the advanced engineering and all the great things that they did back before World War II. Yeah, I, I think it's certainly a more unknown chapter of the automotive lexicon, right? It is very unknown because, you know, although they did trucks and they did cars, they never did a lot of, of anything. They did more trucks than they did cars. And although they built cars for a long time, the production volumes, you know, they did 2,000 a year, 3,000 a year, and they didn't get far outside of Czechoslovakia. You know, they were known in Germany and places around there, but in the United States, they were almost unheard of. It's actually the third oldest European auto manufacturer after Mercedes, Peugeot, Tatra is number three. So they've been building cars a long time. A very long time. But it, but it wasn't until they actually came up with their kind of aerodynamic shape, right, where they stuck the, the engine in the back and they made the cars very aerodynamic. And the original Tatra, what was it, T, what was it very? T11, T11 was the very first car made, yeah. Yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. That it became mm -hmm. kind of iconic. So tell me, you know, I'll get the camera here. Let's walk around and just kind of tell me about what makes these cars unusual. You can just kind of walk oh, around. Okay. And tell me. You want to start with the T11? Yeah. Let's start with I mean, the they really started with the T11 in yeah. 1923. Hans Ludwinka, who was an Austrian engineer, worked for Steyr. Yeah. He wanted to do a people's car, and Steyr said, "No, we're not going to do a people's car. There, there's no money in that. Only there's only going to be expensive cars." So Tatra hired him away with the promise that he could do a people's car. And he did the T11, which was a, a two-cylinder, air-cooled, backbone chassis. It was very robust and very reliable, which in the 20s, that was the most important thing in the, it, with having a car, is that when you went somewhere, you came back in the car and that you didn't come back being towed by a horse. But that wasn't kind of what made him classic, right? That was a No, that was the start. But really, you think in 23, they did the T77 in 1934. So only 12 years later, yep. they advanced from this to a V8 air-cooled rear-engine car with a, with a top speed. Do you speed. have that one here? We don't have a 77. We have an 87, which was, a, which was yeah. the next model. Yeah. And so in a very short time, you know, they went from a bare bones, you know, what I would say, beginner car to a very stylish, high performance, comfortable, fast, reliable car. So this is a T87, which came out in 1936. Yeah, this is, this is the one that was the Nazi killer, right? This was, they said, the Nazi killer. But really, this, this was the most iconic car they ever did. Because although the 77 was the first streamlined car, they only built it for two years and in very low numbers. And they came out with a T87, they upped the horsepower, and this car went 100 miles an hour in 1936. Which was huge. and, and of Anywhere course, in the world. It was which, a huge number. And it had a, a, you know, a rear engine so that you'd get the snap over steer if you went around a corner too fast. Right, which right. Which is why it was called the Nazi killer, because the Nazi um, generals used to love to drive these. And they drove too fast, <laughs> and sometimes they drove off the road. But for the time, it's, it, it's a great handling 
and, and great driving car, and it's very, very quiet, you know, with the motor in the back and all the noise and the heat in the back. I mean, we give people rides today, yep. and they can't believe, you know, you know, 34, the car's almost 80 years old now. And it's also aerodynamic. I mean, and it's that. very aerodynamic. Um, it's an overhead cam, aluminum engine. Can you open it up? So, yeah, and people are always fascinated by the motor. They think it's an airplane engine when, in fact, Tatra, you know, Tatra did their own engines. So, and, they've always done their own engines. And they've always done their yeah. own engines. So, and almost all their cars were air cooled. Not not all of them, but but 90%. So you can see aluminum overhead cam, um, you know, which would have been a big deal in the 50s, but in the 30s it was a super big deal. Yeah, and tons of room too. Very comfortable car. Tons of room, huge back seat. Yeah, I mean, look, um, you know, the only the only drawback is the luggage compartment is behind the back seat, so it's a little bit hard to get to. But you can see how big the back seat is. Yeah, it's 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 immense. And how, so, what's in the front if, if the luggage? Uh, happens? gas tank yeah. and spare tire. Okay. So there's a slight bit of room up front for luggage, but not not very much. I mean, this looks modern now. It does. Yeah. It does. It looks, and it looks it looks like it could be something that was made 40 years ago, not mm -hmm. yeah. 1936. Yep. You said right. So you yeah, you can imagine what a sensation it was when it came out. All right, now here's it, one that if people are familiar with. The front certainly looks familiar, doesn't it? It looks like something that yep. people might be wear very well. It looks aware. a lot like the Volkswagen Beetle. And there is actually a lawsuit where um, Volkswagen and Tetra got embroiled in a suit because basically uh, this was a Beetle. Well, it's very similar to a Beetle. The lawsuit was about, it wasn't about the Beetle itself, it was about the configuration of forced air cooling and rear engine. Okay. And that was what the lawsuit, and that's really Tatra developed that way before Hitler was even thinking about the Beetle taught to develop that in the early 30s. So that, that was the problem. This car just happened to look somewhat like the Beetle. And really, that's what Ludwinka was doing. I mean, they built this car and he loved it and it was nice, but he realized it was too expensive. He was always thinking about people's cars. And he said, this is not gonna be for everybody. And I need to build a smaller version of this so more people can enjoy the technology. And that's what he did with the T97. Does it have uh, suicide doors? It, it does in the front, yeah. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. pretty crazy. Yep. Look at that. Yep. The T87 had the same thing. And how about the engine? What, what size engine? It's a boxer, four-cylinder. Like a Beetle? Like a Beetle, yeah. exactly like a Beetle. Uh, I believe it's 1.5 liters. And you've got the 15. same kind of uh, aerodynamic. Slightly smaller tail. It, you know, if you didn't know the 87 and the 97, you would think they were the same. This is just a little bit shorter car, a little bit narrower, smaller engine, slightly, slightly smaller fin. So more of a people's car. More of a people's car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then after this, I think the Tetraplan was the one that the Tetraplan came, came up next. Yeah, let's, the silver car over let's here. Go get, let's go to the yep. Tetraplan, which mm -hmm. is the next in that kind of series of cars. So the Tetraplan would have been the first um, communist car. Yep, under the communist. Under the communist, because all the other Tatras before that were made under capitalism and Hans Ludwinka. Hans Ludwinka. Uh, unfortunately was imprisoned after World War II for working for the Germans, which he had to do since they took the country over. But, um, and Tatra wanted him to come back and he said no, he didn't want to come back under communism. So, but this is a Tatra Plan, which was the next car. And you can still see, it's, it's got a lot of the lines of the T97. Yeah. It's a little more austere, yep. and that's because it was com yes. communism. Yeah, so yeah. they got rid of the V8, went back to a four cylinder, fin got a little bit smaller. You know, the vehicle's not quite as I guess you would say stylish and soupy, but still a very advanced car. You know, rode very well, handled well, and then good brakes. And then of course, after this car, you get to the iconic, I think, the 603, which is right here next to you, because yep. the communists wanted something that was a little bit more luxurious for the, for the party officials. Yep, and so, and so they went back to the V8, but they went, up, sure, they went to more of a, what, what I call a Bel Air, you know, Chevy Bel Air style almost. Now that is a big V8. Air cool. That's crazy. Air cool. Yep, as Tatra almost always was. But again, you know, huge proportions. A huge back seat. You know, huge front seat. Still a very luxurious car. Um, top speed dropped down to like 90 miles an hour because it wasn't quite as aerodynamic, and, and the, this engine only did 100 horsepower. The T87 only did 75, but it was sleek enough more that it would go faster than this car. But still, it's a very well done car. And then the very last one that's over next to us is the 613, if I recall. 613, right. yep. And um, these were, well, these were 
collapse of the communist cars and, and, before they stopped building cars. And this was actually designed by Bengali in Italy. Oh, that's right. It's yes. the first time that Topter paid an outside designer to do any body work. And so you can see when they got to the 613, it's become very mainstream. Yep. You know, you could drive it, you could have drove this in America and it wouldn't really turn a lot of heads. People wouldn't know that it's rear engine. Um, you know, they have no idea. But again, in a 613, they moved the engine kind of up over the rear axle. So, so now it's not back behind, proving the weight distribution somewhat. But the, the other thing about Tatra is, you know, the, they built the T603 for 20 years. Yep. They built the T87 for 20 years. They built this for 20 years. So they, you know, a lot of their cars had really long production cycles. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for sharing these wonderful cars with us. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you letting us uh, come into your museum and kind of uh, check out the Tatra collection. It's really cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, Nathan. So here's the dealio, man. This summer, 2014, we are going to go to Prague and guess what we're going to buy? A Toyota. No, we're going to get a Tatra. Yeah, we're going to get a Tatra and we're going to drive it all the way to Germany and then? Then we're going to bring it here and we're going to bring it to the museum, the T603, one of my favorite cars, my dream car. We're actually going to buy it and we're going to have a road trip and we're going to do videos and we're going to have so much fun, man. We're going to be using a lot of wrenches, a lot of oil and a lot of sweat. Yes, and we're going to bring it back to America and then we're going to sell it. So stay tuned. That's coming up this summer on the Fast Lane Car.